We all know F1 is expensive, but did you know a simple wheel nut costs nearly £1,000? That one F1 team can spend upwards of £50,000 a weekend on wheel nuts alone? Well, that seems ridiculous, so let me explain. Now, F1 wheel nuts haven't always been that expensive. There's been a long history of steady development to get them where they are now. And actually, in the early days of F1, they used to hammer the wheel nuts on. Yep, this was because impact guns just weren't a thing. And the only other option was using numerous studs, which take a long time to change. So F1 cars used these single center lock nuts with these wings on the side. Some had two and some had three, and the pit crews would carry a mallet to the pit lane to hammer off the nut, change the wheel and hammer on a new one. The wheel would locate on these pins to stop it spinning on the hub. Then the single nut would secure it and the mechanic knew they were tight when the mallet just wouldn't tighten the nut any further. And on an interesting side note, when the Ferrari F1 cars were using this, they also used them on their road cars. And the Ferrari 365 GTB actually came with a Thor mallet in the toolkit. F1 ran with these nuts through the 50s and 60s and they worked well, except for when they didn't they had one key issue. When the car puts load through the wheel under braking or acceleration, there is a twisting force. And when the nut is really tight, this is okay. But even with a slight movement of the wheel, each time you brake or accelerate the car, the wheel is trying to shuffle the nut back and forth. Combine that with the incredible vibrations and smashing the car over curbs, and the wheel nuts were known to come loose. However, the teams did come up with a way to reduce this. They ran right-handed threads on the left side of the car and left-handed threads on the the right hand side of the car. And as you've probably realized, this would mean that under braking, the wheel would try to tighten the nut rather than loosen it on both sides of the car. This works best on the front axle where the main load is braking, but on the rear, the wheels are driven in one direction and braked in the other. And this resulted in a lot of wheels coming off over the years. Soon, F1 moved to wheel nuts with a hexagonal head on them, initially using steel, but later moving to aluminium. And you can see on wheel nuts like this, they have parts to allow for a pin to go through and stop the wheel nut coming loose, solving the problem that we just spoke about. F1 engineers call this a retention system, and they really developed this in the last 15 years, but we'll get onto that in a little while. But F1 did move on using these sorts of wheel nuts, with many indentations that would seat faster in a socket, using a spline design to mean that there was less possibility of the socket not engaging. Because at this point, F1 pit stops were getting faster, but were still limited by the time the fuel took to flow into the car. So the wheel change wasn't the limiting factor in a pit stop. However, there were cool little innovations, one of them being the captive wheel nut. So rather than the mechanic removing the wheel nut, putting it down, swapping the wheel, then threading the nut on before torquing it, the nut was held captive in the wheel. So the old nut came off with the old wheel and the new one was there ready on the new wheel. And this sort of system is still used today. Now, in later years, F1 came up with genius ways to keep wheel nuts secure. And so they don't do this. You can see this Honda wheel nut from 2006 was very light, had this spline design for easy location of the socket and these small holes for the wheel nut retention system to stop it falling off mid-race. But other teams like Red Bull were still using the hex system until 2008. Sometimes the simplest solution is the best, and many race teams in GT3 or prototypes still use wheel nuts like this today, often purchased from a third-party supplier. But in 2009, things started to get weird. They started to experiment with the aerodynamics of the wheel, and the wheel nut became part of this. But earlier in 2006, Ferrari played with the shrouds that were mounted to the wheel, with a hole in the middle to access the wheel nut. But ultimately, they were deemed movable aerodynamic devices, and therefore banned. But Ferrari came up with a clever way around this in 2009, by making the shroud static, and therefore legal. It was technically part of the braking duct system, but was essentially built into the wheel nut, and allowed the engineers to cut down on drag and allow the cars to go faster. It was really clever too, because the wheel nut spins with the wheel, so the shroud had to engage with the static shaft deep in the axle to hold it stationary. Over the season, teams began playing with the design of the shroud to reduce drag and control the airflow off the wheel, and improve the downforce of the car around the edge of the floor and the diffuser. But this meant that in the pit stop, the mechanics had to remove the shroud as part of the wheel nut. So the teams added these large perspex covers to the wheel guns and removed the shroud and wheel nut as one, for reinstalling it with the new wheel. However, after all that effort, for the next season, 
they were banned. But in 2010, there was a bigger shakeup. F1 banned refueling, and that changed everything. Suddenly, the only thing the teams needed to do in a typical pit stop was change the tires. So the wheel nuts were instantly needing to be improved, and these hex nuts just wouldn't fly. Think of it this way, a USB cable only goes in one way, and you never get it right first time. These hex nuts have eight ways that they can locate correctly. So the likelihood of messing up in a pit stop is still quite high. So what these teams did was develop these types of wheel nuts. This is a 2011 Mercedes wheel nut. And you can see that the main difference is the splines around the outside. There are 12 of them, meaning that the socket will locate in more positions. But also, if you look at the socket, there are rounded ends to the teeth that engage with the nut. Meaning that as the mechanic seats the socket onto the nut, if they are slightly out of alignment, the socket will rotate slightly to allow the gun to engage correctly nearly every time. Later in 2011, Ferrari came up with more ideas. They moved to a much more coarse thread, meaning that where other teams were rotating their nuts five, six, or seven times, Ferrari mechanics only needed to rotate them three times and therefore speeding up the pit stops. Very clever indeed. And remember I mentioned the left and right hand threads from before? Well, on this Caterham F1 drawing, you can see that the right side wheel nuts were anodized red and the left were green, meaning that the mechanics could identify them quickly. And on this drawing, you can see how the captive wheel nut system works. This slot will have a sprung circular clip that holds the nut into the wheel. And at this point, one of the regulations was that every wheel nut had to have a retention system that would stop the wheel nut coming off completely if it came loose, like I explained earlier. And in this picture, you can see how it worked on the Catrum. These sprung elements would compress when the wheel gun was engaged and spring out when the wheel nut was on. This also allowed the mechanic to visually see if the nut wasn't fully tightened. And in this image, you can see how it works on today's cars. Now, as much as all the teams tried to develop in 2010, there were still issues with the dramatic rise in wheel nuts coming off mid-race and often a lap or two after a pit stop. Despite the systems, adapting to a three or four second pit stop was a loss and there was now a smaller margin for human error. Next big progression with wheel nuts was when the teams began experimenting with blown axles, a genius idea that uses air from the brake duct system and channels it through the axle in order to manage the tire wake and improve aerodynamics. This flow moved the tire wake away from the car, improving the downforce, but also improving cooling as the shape of the tire tended to direct dirty airflow into the side pods. Whilst this still has a cooling effect, it means you get less calling for the given drag. So the blown wheel nuts debuted by Williams in 2013 actually made a significant difference. But a crucial part of that was the wheel nut. So the teams moved to a much larger front wheel nut in order to allow for better airflow. But I know what you're all thinking. What about Bottas in Monaco? Well, that is one of the downsides of this design. The teams want more splines on the outside of the wheel nut, as more splines means less chance of a gun not seating correctly. More of them also means that they are smaller and therefore weaker. Before Monaco 2021, Mercedes had been using that design for a while and it never caused any issues. So what happened? Well, the pit lane at Monaco is tight and Bottas didn't quite land on his marks, which is kind of understandable as this is a really difficult part of racing. So the mechanic had to shuffle over and reach for the wheel nut. And this meant that the socket didn't fully engage before the mechanic pulled the trigger on the wheel gun. And these things are powerful. They have a hammer system that delivers 4,000 Newton meters at over 3,000 RPM. So way more torque than most supercars. And with this, the wheel nut was machined with the socket shearing off all all of the splines, leaving the nut stuck on and the team having to cut it off at the factory. In 2023, the wheel nuts are actually kind of shared. It's a bit weird, so they're classified as a part that the teams can develop, but they all have to share information on. And it's all in an effort to stop the smaller developments on the car costing the teams so much. So if Ferrari come up with another revolutionary idea for their wheel nuts, the other teams can make their own without getting into an expensive development battle. And also this year's wheels are all made by BBS and are the same on every car. So the systems aren't too different from car to car. However, onto the cost. The wheel nuts are made out of aluminium, which is light, but not massively strong. So the teams use these super lightweight 
detailed and complex wheel nuts. And they often machine them in-house. So they need to buy the material and then machine them to the incredible standards of F1. They're then x-rayed to ensure they are crack-free and then anodized. This is used to make them slightly more wear resistant and also to color them. And all of this is incredibly expensive. Current estimates are that they cost 800 to 1,000 pounds each. And that's not the worst bit. Aluminium isn't very wear resistant, so the teams often can't reuse the wheel nuts. So for every wheel they use, they use a new wheel nut. And the teams are given 13 sets of tires per race for each car. So quick maths means that that works out at over 50,000 pounds per car per weekend, just for the wheel nuts. Now, they might reuse or even remachine some of them, but still, that is remarkable. Wheel nuts aren't the most expensive thing on an F1 car. F1 pistons can cost up to £50,000 each. You can watch that video just here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.